Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I would be very happy to be in Brazil right now. This would have been my first time, but maybe maybe in the future. So some the, the main motivation for my talk is the following. Often we want to solve a combinatorial problem, but we cannot. We cannot find an enumeration formula. And we wonder whether we can't do it because we are just not good enough or the problem is actually difficult. And sometimes one way to see that it's difficult is to prove that the the generating function of the problem, which we cannot determine, we can nevertheless prove that it would not have some nice properties. For instance, it wouldn't be rational. So uh, that's the main goal. So every generating function in this talk is the ordinary generating function. We don't care about the exponential ones or, or others in this talk. And there will be three classes of power series that are interesting for us. The rational generating functions, algebraic generating functions, and definite generating functions. The rational generating functions are the main topic, which are just the ratio of two polynomials. Uh, this is the same thing, by the way, as saying that the coefficients satisfy a linear recurrence relation like this with constant coefficients. And then, if we can find an uh, if a, a problem has a rational function as a solution, then it's often easy to find it. But it's much harder to prove that one doesn't exist when, the, when one doesn't exist. And so I will talk about a method to prove that, a negative result like that. Um, by the way, the two other classes which will come up a little bit are algebraic generating functions, those that satisfy an algebraic equation like the polynomial equation like that, and definite power series. Uh, which um, are like this. So the vector space spanned by all the derivatives is finite dimensional. Then we say that the, the power series is definite. Everything that's algebraic is definite. It's not trivial, but it can be proved. And uh, a power series is definite if and only if uh, the coefficients satisfy a linear recurrence relations with, with polynomial coefficients. So remember, I said the same thing for rational generating functions, but there these polynomials were actually constants. Okay, so that's a big difference. Um, yeah, so back to non-rationality. We will need the main law of combinatorial asymptotics. That is, if you have a combinatorial generating function, meaning that the coefficients are non-negative real numbers, then the exponential growth rate of the coefficients is equal to one over r, where r is the radius of convergence of the power series around zero. Okay, we will use this. Um, now, this is the, a crucial definition for today. This, if f and g are two generating functions with non-negative real coefficients that, that are analytic at zero, and they, they relate to each other like this, then this relation is called supercritical if g at its convergence radius is bigger than one. Okay, so this that if this happens, then the relation between f and g is called supercritical. This is very important because this has both a combinatorial and an analytic meaning. Okay, the analytical meaning is this: if you know. The coefficient, coefficients of g are non-negative. So if g at rg is bigger than 1, that means that g was equal to 1 somewhere earlier. So here, this fraction will become undefined before g becomes undefined. So the convergence radius of f is smaller than the convergence radius of g, and therefore, uh, the coefficients of f grow faster than the coefficients of g in the exponential sense. They have a higher exponential order. The combinatorial meaning is similar because this relation that f is equal to 1 over 1 minus g means this. That is, f is put together by components of the kind g, either one component or two components or, or three components and so on, an undetermined number of components. But again, because of what I have said, the, the exponential growth rate of f is bigger than the exponential growth rate of g so that the composite structures grow faster than the components okay so if the relation between f and g is supercritical then the components have a smaller exponential order than the composite structures okay and the punchline is that for rational power series this does hold 
if f and g if f is rational then g is rational and vice versa of course and it is very easy to see that for for rational for rational functions this will be super critical because well either g is a polynomial or it's not a polynomial and in both cases it's easy to see well that the that g at rg will actually be infinity and therefore it will be bigger than one okay so if f and g are rational functions then this is a super critical relation therefore if you want to prove that something is not rational it's enough to prove that this relation is not super critical okay that that's my method i want to prove non-rationality by proving that the corresponding relation is not super critical okay that's that's the punchline of the talk so in other words if i can prove that f and g the components and the composite structures of some combinatorial kind have the same exponential order, then their generating functions cannot be rational. And that's what I will do today. So my main example is pattern avoiding permutations. That's one of my favorite fields. And this, this is a very good example because there are lots of cases when we don't know much, but, but nevertheless, we will be able to prove negative results, even if we cannot prove positive results. Okay, so this at one picture is worth 10,000 words. So if you have a long permutation, like this permutation of length eight, we say that it contains this short, short permutation of length three, one, three, two, because I can find three entries, five, eight, and six within the big permutation, which relate to each other the same way as the small and there's the entries of the small permutation that is to say that the first one is the smallest like in one three two one is the smallest the second one is the largest like in one three two three is the largest and the last one is the middle one in size like two is the middle one in size so this p contains this q if p doesn't contain q then we say that p avoids q and let AQZ be the generating function for the numbers of permutations of length n that avoid Q. What do we know about this generating function? Well, not very much, almost nothing in general. Uh, there are some special results about short patterns, the patterns of length three and monotone patterns, when it's known that the generating function is, is definite, no matter how long that monotone pattern is. Okay, let this be the number of permutations of length n that avoid the pattern Q. So then, there is a conjecture by Cyberger and Noonan, which I will state in the single pattern case, uh, and that says that for all patterns Q, that this sequence is polynomially recursive, equivalently, the generating function of the sequence is definite. And this conjecture in that form is still on, is still open. However, if instead of one pattern, you want to avoid several patterns at the same time, then it's known to be false. It was disproved by Igor Puck and Scott Garabrand. Uh, but, but in the single pattern case, it's still unknown. So we cannot decide that in the single pattern case, but at least I can prove that for most patterns in a strong sense, in two different ways, I can prove that the generating function is not rational. Okay, so it may be the finite, but it's not rational. And that's what I will prove. And uh, let's say that a permutation is Q in the composable. If it, if you cannot cut it into two parts so that everything before the cut is bigger than everything after the cut, like this is an example, you cannot cut this one. This you can cut. So this is not skewed in the composable because here everything before the cut is bigger than everything after the cut. Um, if P is not skew in the composable, then there is a unique way to cut it up into non-empty skew in the composable strings, which I will call the skew blocks. See, those are the building blocks I will need in my argument about generating functions. Here is an example. There is this permutation. This is not skew in the composable. I, I, there is a unique way to cut it up into skew blocks. This is that way. So this has four skew blocks. And the theorem is, here is my, my, my theorem. Let Q be a skew in the composable pattern that, and this is important, does not end in its largest entry. Then it's generating function. The generating function for number of permutations of length n avoiding that pattern is not rational. Okay. Well, it's clear that P avoids Q if and only if 
each of the skew blocks avoid Q. That, that's obvious because Q is Q in the composable. And then the big deal is that if now I put an extra entry here at the end, an extra new maximum entry n, then because my pattern does not end in its largest entry, therefore that new permutation, which is one longer, still avoids the pattern Q. But now that the new permutation is skewing the composable because it ends in its largest entry. So of course it cannot be cut up into skew blocks. Okay. And with that, uh, I, I am almost home because uh, so the number of permutations uh, avoiding Q and the number of skewing the composable permutations avoiding Q satisfies this relation. And if AQ was rational, then remember, then this would be a supercritical relation. So AQ and AQ1 could not have the same convergence radius. They could not have the same exponential order. We discussed it at the beginning of the talk. However, if we do just that, what I said, you put an entry n plus one at the end of the permutation, then as I said, the new permutation p prime still avoids skew, but is also skewed in the composable. So with this, I proved that the number of in the skew in the composable ones, which is one, which are one longer, the number of building blocks, which are one longer, is bigger than the number of composite structures of size n. Therefore, these two sequences, the number of all permutations avoiding Q and the number of skewing the composable permutations avoiding Q, have the same exponential order. Therefore, this relation cannot be supercritical, so these generating functions cannot be rational. Okay, so that, that was that, that's how my method works. If you can prove that the and usually you prove this by an injection that the building blocks are exponentially as numerous as the composite structures then the generating function cannot be rational so which are the patterns for which this doesn't work so you can do some trickeries by symmetry and some some other some other uh, not terribly difficult equivalences and then you can prove the following theorem let Q be a skew in the composable pattern of length Q so that at least one of the following holds. Q doesn't start with the entry one, or Q doesn't start with the end, with, doesn't end with the maximum entry. Or Q is equivalent, I will tell you what that is, to a skew in the composable pattern that satisfies at least one of the first two conditions. So Wilf equivalent just means that it's avoided by the same number of patterns of any length. Okay. So the fact that it's skewed in the composable is not terribly difficult to beat because if, if Q is Q decomposable, then it's opposite, it's reverse is not. So if any of these happens, then AQ is not, AQZ is not rational. So then you wonder, when is it that none of this applies? Uh, like say, for instance, the mono, for the monotone pattern, the first two doesn't apply, but it's will effect equivalence to the permutation when you flip the first two entries and then it does. So also note that it will not be always, always true because there is the, the very, very trivial exception that if Q is equal to one, two, then the only permutation that avoids the pattern one, two is the decreasing permutation. And there is one decreasing permutation of any length. And then the generating function is this, and that's of course rational. But I strongly believe that this is the only exception. Um, so the smallest, the shortest pattern for which we don't know non-rationality is one three two four and if you know about pattern avoidance then this is an amazing fact because this pattern is so difficult for many other purposes like we don't know even the exponential order of it for, among other things um, so finally i would like to end with a wider class of example where this method can be applied uh, Stacks, T stack sortable permutations is one of them. So the generating function of T stack sortable permutations, if you know what those are, is not, not rational for any T. But in his famous book, Enumerative Combinatorics Volume 2, Richard Stanley lists six general families of combinatorial objects, proves that they are counted by the same sequences, and shows that the generating functions of those sequences with some basic assumptions is algebraic. So you know, just because something is algebraic, you, 
it doesn't mean that it's never rational. It, you, it could be that it's algebraic of order, whatever, two, and under the square root sign, there is something, some expression, which for some cho choice of parameters turns out to be ra rational. But with the same method, you can prove that that doesn't happen. Again, one picture is worth 10,000 words and time is short, so I'm just, I, I just show this picture. Again, what you want to prove is that the uh, exponential order of the components, the irredu irreducible components, is the same as the exponential order of the composite structures. And again, you can do it by a, an inject injection. And uh, the details are in my abstract, so you can, you can look them up. But this is the same idea. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much. Um, uh, so we are in. Uh, we have enough time for for discussion and for questions. And if there's someone who wants to to pose a question to Miklos, uh, I I would invite you to to go to this uh, stand for them to get the mic. Um, I hope you know how, how to do that. Um, is there any question? So, um, uh, Miklos, yeah. uh, I don't know one. Um, do you think that this this kind of idea uh, would also apply to other combinatorial um, operations where you also have the notion of super criticality, like in, in, in cycles or sets in, uh, when you're moving to the label? Uh, I think, yes. I mean, uh, like, can you give me an example? Like, what, what, what kind of structure? I don't know, but but the, the fact is that you are, you relate the uh, what you are relating is when f is a sequence of g, right? Yes, yes. The permutations. That's yes. a clear a clear example. But uh, but uh, and then you are using uh, the, the, the the combinatorial operation is one over one minus yes g. But then you have also sets or cycles where um, essentially you are doing also a sequence, but you you, you impose sort of, uh, in the case, case of cycles, it's a sequence, but you, you make sure that the, the first item in your sequence is the one with the smallest label, right? Yes. So, or in the case of uh, sets, you are, can also list the set by, uh, Giving first the, the 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 component that has the smallest label, then what you get is a, a set, right? Mm -hmm. After that, so the, the idea should work also for the, those kinds of those, those this kind of uh, of structures, isn't it? I think I think so. Yes. Now, what what um, what comes to mind? I, I never thought of it that way, but what comes to mind is that uh, you know, for for those so for those kind of questions, sometimes you know that the answer is not rational anyway, right? If, uh -huh. But but if you don't, then then you could try to apply this method. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So yeah. yeah. So but 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 if you come up with a good example where this could be tried, then I would like to hear that. So just please tell me. Sure. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs>